Today we're going to do some nature printing. This is really fun for kids and adults and I'm trying to keep it really simple so that hopefully you already have the equipment in your house as long as you have some basic acrylic paints. This is the Harden Berger by Alasia or Happy Wanderer. If you're in Australia and you've been bushwalking you've probably come across this beautiful plant otherwise a lot of people have it growing in their gardens. We're going to make some nature prints with these leaves. They're really thick and leathery and their veins are quite obvious. So they're perfect for this project. So this is the main equipment that I'll be using. Um, I, being an artist, I have these paints already in my collection, but even these kids, uh, post paints, acrylic paints, whatever you've got will be fine. Um, I also have, I'm just gonna mix the color with a brush, but then I'll use this little, got this little sponge on a roller, but even these, this is just a torn up dishcloth. That'll be fine. Anything foam, makeup pads, something like that'll be okay. You probably could even just use the brush to put the paint onto the leaves. And I have this big one as well, which I don't need today, but it is handy. In terms of paper, I've just got this textured paper that I've had sitting around for a while. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. So, um, this is really good, um, but any uh, like a watercolor paper or even just photocopy paper um, will be fine. The smoother the paper, probably the more um, print you will get from the leaf. Depending on what you're actually printing, some of the leaves might be flat, but some of them um, might be sitting up a little bit. So it can help to um, press them. So I'm just going to pop a few of these leaves into um, I'm putting them between pieces of baking paper and then I'm just going to put a heavy book on top you can put them into the book sometimes I do that pressing flowers I actually have some others that um, are already flat but this is what I would do just try and keep them flat like that fold the paper over really more to protect the book I suppose and then just get a nice heavy book Just plonk that on top and even half an hour will help. I've just got a yellow and a blue here that I'm going to mix to be a nice green, sort of a bluey green. You can really use any colours. And I'm just grabbing my little rolly sponge, but as I said, any kind of sponge will work okay. These are actually leaves that I've printed from before, so they're pretty flat. And your fingers are gonna get a little bit dirty. Just sort of try and hold on to one section of the leaf while you paint the rest. So I'm painting over the whole leaf and I've just gotta go through and do all of these leaves. Just pay attention to have a look at the front and the back of the leaf. You wanna choose the side where the veins are sort of sticking out the most. There are lots of other leaves and flowers that would be good for this project. Just do a bit of experimenting um, as to how long you sort of leave the paint on there, you know, whether you let it dry a little bit. Sometimes a lot of paint will transfer to the paper and sometimes not as much. And, uh, you know, I think both have their merits, but. Sometimes when it's not as much, you get to see more of the veins of the leaves. This job does get a bit messy. That's part of the fun, I suppose. Now, it might have been a good idea to work out a composition beforehand, but I'm just going to plonk them on there and see how I go. When you put the leaf on, don't lift it off again. So put it on really carefully. Try not to move it because you will get smudges. So I'm just sort of grabbing a few and putting them into kind of a pleasing composition, I hope. So you're putting the side with the paint on it, you're putting that down on your paper. So this is the paper that's going to be the artwork. Obviously, I'm just using some newspaper just to protect the surface. 
Now I've got a piece of scrap paper here. In hindsight, it probably would have been better to use white paper so that I could see the leaves through it. Now I just need to press sort of reasonably firmly, but I'm trying not to move the leaves underneath because again, I don't want to move them or smudge the paint. So I'm just kind of feeling through the paper just trying to feel where the leaves are and make sure that I go over each leaf and sort of press it down firmly. Just keep trying to find those leaves. Try and remember how many you had there. You'll, you'll feel the shape depending on how thick the leaves are. As I said, these are quite thick and leathery, so they're really good for this. Eucalyptus leaves would work really well too. Okay, and when I think I've sort of got everything, I'll just sort of push over the whole lot of the paper as well, just tr trying to make sure that I've got some sort of pressure on all of the leaves. And now very carefully, I'll lift up that sheet of paper on top and carefully just pull each leaf off. So you can see that's a fairly light impression. These couple haven't printed too much. Again, I'm using a really textured paper. I, I quite like this effect. Well, that's got a little bit more. So there's a, a little bit of variation in there. Right, so that's the printing done. Now you want to let that dry now. So while you've got all this paint and leaves and everything out, you may as well do a few of these. So I've just had a bit more of a play on this one on the top right. I put a lot of different leaves on. Well, actually, I think I sort of let one layer dry and then I came back and put some more on in the gaps. So you don't have to do it all in one go. You can make sure you let it dry though in between. Then I decided that I might come back and I found a, a bronze metallic paint that I had. So I decided to give that a go. So again, I let this one dry and then I got some of the leaves that I had already used green paint on and added some of the bronze to it. So when I was playing around earlier, I did use a, um, a, a special ink that's for like uh, lino cuts um, and I did need to put it onto a piece of glass with this, I think this is a brayer. Um, so that was a bit of a different technique and you, I mean I think now I could paint watercolour over the top of that, which you probably can't do with the acrylic ones. But the idea of this video was just to make it really easy using things that you have in your home. So I'm just showing you what there is a lot more that you could do. So I've got my three sheets here and with this one, I decided I might just get a black marker and trace around the outside of the leaves just to give them a bit more, bit more shape. Um, and you can do anything. You can add, you know, glitter, paints, do whatever you like. But I thought I might just start by, I might make this one into a bit of a little miniature artwork. So I'm just going around the outside. It's good to refer to your actual leaf so you know the shape. These Hardenbergia leaves have got a bit of a, uh, a, an elongated heart shape. So it's good to um, make sure that you get that shape right if you can. So I'm going to go around all of these now and I might speed this video up for that. Now I'm still feeling like I could do something else to make this a bit more intricate. 
So I'm going to add the little, the little part of the leaf that joins it to the main stem, which is actually called the petiole. So I'll go around and add that to all of the leaves. And you might have seen that the stems are really windy and twining. So I'm just kind of going to make it up and put some nice winding stems through this artwork just to pull all the leaves together and um, just make it a look, look a bit more unified. So I'm just sort of thinking about how I can join them up. It doesn't really matter. Put some nice curves in there. Have the stems going behind the leaves sometimes. It looks a bit interesting. I'm going to keep adding a few more, so I'll speed this bit up as well. There we go, I think that looks pretty cool. Very happy with that. So with the sheet where I added a lot of leaves, I'm gonna cut it up. I'm going to turn the top section into a bookmark. The bottom right I'll use on a greeting card and then to the left I might make a couple of little gift cards. So this is what I've come up with, that one sheet that had lots of leaves printed on it. So I've used one section to make a card. Um, I just had some cardboard sitting around, um, so I've made a card with that. Stuck that on with a, blue, a glue stick. Um, this is my bookmark. I've put a little hole in the bottom and threaded some ribbon through. And you could write a message on the back if you wanted to. And then these little gift cards, I've just used some string here, and you don't even have to use string, but you know, they'll be good to attach to, to gifts. This one I've actually written Merry Christmas on it, so you can just write your own message on the back. So I think this is a really good project because we can do so many different things. We've created a little artwork. These are really useful gifts and we've had fun doing it. So I hope you've had as much fun as I've had doing this. Thanks for joining me. If you do want to learn a bit more about the Hardenberger Violacea and how to sketch it and paint it, go see my video on the sketchbook project painting the Hardenberger Violacea using the link. And happy printing and creating.